Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to my channel. My name's Lucas. Today I'm going to be doing a video that I just thought of recently because I've been MDing for an artist and I get questions about this sometimes and it's kind of an interesting topic uh, with regard to Ableton Live. So I'm going to walk you through a template that I have created for performing live and it includes auto-tune, click track, in-ears, mix, um, and also using stems in your live set. So essentially this setup is pretty much for singing over a bunch of tracks. If you have a show, I think it'll be really helpful. And uh, if you'd like to just buy the template and not even deal with uh, putting it together with me uh, during this video, you can uh, go ahead and uh, check out my website and just get it for $5. You can also just follow along too because I think it'll be really useful either way so that you can understand how this works and what's going on. Um, doing live sets can be a little complicated at first because people get confused about routing issues and also like more specifically actually like multi output routing and also like doing click track and auto tune and latency and things like that. So I'm going to go over all of it. So here's how my session looks like. So by the way, this is for about a half hour set. So we have eight tracks. So you can see I've put markers all along here, so you don't even have to do that, but you're going to want to go in and label all of them. You're going to have to obviously adjust this for your particular music because your songs might be shorter or longer, but I've, you know, allotted about, you know, like four minutes or something per, per track. So we can see I've set up groups for all these tracks. So you have a group for all the instruments for the track, all the effects like delays, reverbs, anything like that that you might need to perform with, as well as background vocals for each track. So all these folders have the same thing. You may need to customize that for yourself. You can also just use the instrumental, whatever works. And I've backed these down by minus two dB just so we have a little bit of headroom. We wanna be able to have some wiggle room with volume either up or down so that we're not blasting everything through the master and sending it to the, to the house engineer for the venue. And then lastly, we have this vocal channel. So when you open this up, it's gonna be set to in. You're gonna to wanna to have it on in if you're monitoring in Ableton. And uh, so this is where your vocals are. I've set up like a nice kind of stock vocal chain that I like to use for these types of things. It doesn't use too much CPU, but you can customize that for whatever you need. You just want to make sure you're not blasting anything. So there's feedback. So definitely test it out in a rehearsal space. And we also have auto tune here, which I will talk about in a minute. So you're going to need auto tune EFX to run this, but you don't have to use it. You can just remove it if you don't use autotune, but part of this video demo is also talking about autotune because that confuses people uh, uh, about how to do it live. The first thing I'm also gonna talk about before I even get into some of the nitty gritty details is I have this set up for an in-ears mix. So what this means is essentially there's this return track in Ableton and we can put as much level of any particular track into this in-ears mix as we want. So you can literally have a different mix in your in-ear monitors, which will also have click, by the way. Um, so this is going to be a separate output on your interface. So right now I'm using an Apollo, and I have this set to 3, 4, but you're going to have to customize this for whatever interface you're using. And uh, similarly, I just want to also mention in console, we just need to be aware that you need to decide whether or not you're going to be using Ableton to monitor or if you're going to be using console to monitor. So what I mean is if you go to these Q outputs and you have anything assigned to your outputs, here they're going to be disabled in Ableton. So if you want to monitor your live set in Apollo, you can totally do that. You're going to just use these outputs here and set up your cues here. But for this video, I'm going to be talking about how to do it in Ableton because I think doing it in Ableton is kind of cool. You can have auto-tune automated on there and uh, just affords you a lot of other interesting creative things that you could do for your live set. So most important thing from this uh, little side comment is make sure your outputs are available in console if you're using Apollo. That way we can freely use them in Ableton. It will not work if you don't have that set up correctly. So um, Apollo can be a little confusing. So we have our in-ears mix here. We have the master, which I, I put utilities on a lot of these tracks, uh, just in case you need to bump the gain, you know, and, and just a limiter here. So we're not blasting the sound guy. You may want to check on this depending on the level of all your stuff. I would just leave a lot of headroom for anything. They can always just blast it on the mixer in the venue. There's no need to blast it through your interface because the, the sound guy's just going to get upset. So that's pretty much it. And uh, the one thing that I just want to mention that's a little bit confusing that you will definitely need to customize for your own live set, two things. One, also by the way, on these tracks, I put a glue compressor. It shouldn't really be doing much, but it's just soft clipping. Try not to blast it through there. You may need to turn your tracks down. One thing that uh, always comes up is the issue of latency. One thing that causes latency is 
plugins like AutoTune. So you want to open up your AutoTune and go to settings and make sure it has used low latency. The next thing you want to do is go to your live preferences and make sure you're at 128, which for me has been pretty stable unless your session's crazy. If you're monitoring in console for UAD, you can change this. If you still have latency, I actually recommend checking your sends situation. So as you can tell, I've actually disabled all the sends that I'm not using here. So if you just right click, you can enable send or disable it. I've noticed that these scents cause a lot of latency. It actually took me quite a few years to figure this out. So what I mean to say is that we're just using the sends at the track level here. So all of the instruments, effects, and background vocals are just getting pipelined into the track group, and then that's going to your in-ears mix. However, if you wanted to get total control and have these individual groups like instruments, effects, background vocals uh, routed into your in-ears mix and kind of control the levels that way, you would have to enable these sends. But I noticed for all these tracks and groups that I have with all those sends enabled, it creates a lot of latency. So I'd recommend just deciding how you want to work and then disable all the sends that you're not going to be using so that you don't have extra latency on your voice uh, when you're doing that. And then if that doesn't work, uh, another thing that you could also do is you could run the session in a higher sample rate as well, which should have lower latency, but you can see your overall latency here. But the sends trick is super helpful. So just to recap real quick, just decide whether or not for your in-ears mix, you wanna have a specific balance of these in individual instruments, and then whatever you're not using in the sense, just disable the send so that it's not uh, doing delay compensation for that. The last thing I'm going to talk about, which is probably the main thing that people are asking about, is how do you do auto-tune automation? So check this out. I've already gotten started. So like I said, if you don't have auto-tune, this won't work. But presumably, if you have auto-tune, this is just going to pull up normally on your computer. This is done for a different live set, but I've kind of gotten the automation started. So I press the key command A to open up automation. I've already saved these two lanes that you need to work with here. So there's three things that we're automating in this session. One is whether or not autotune is even on or off. So you want it off if you're talking and not playing a song because you don't want the autotune to, to be audible to the audience, depending on how much autotune you want to use. So you're going to have to obviously dial this autotune in for however much uh, effect that you want. Um, but we're going to turn it off when the song ends. So for example, if you have your waveform here and the song ends, the autotune turns off and then it turns on for the next song. Number two is the key. So you're gonna have to grab these and mess with the key. So when you bounce your songs for the live versions, just make sure you write down what key they're in and what the BPMs are. Uh, because the third thing you're also gonna have to do is you're gonna have to automate the song tempo if you, if you plan to use click. Uh, this should be pretty much set up to do a count off and then the band can start playing, but you have to automate the tempos here. So as you can see, we would just grab this and change the tempo depending on whatever the song is. So that depends on whether or not you know the tempos of the song. If you don't, you're going to have to figure out the tempos of the song. And uh, But that should be pretty straightforward. I have some other videos on that. But that's pretty much it. So we're automating three things, auto-tune device on or off, auto-tune key, and the mixer song tempo. You can actually set a low and high point like a threshold point or whatever so that it's not such a wide range if you just have a small range of, of tempos that your songs are in and that's pretty much it so let me know how this goes uh this is this whole template you can just download it on my website for five bucks um, but i hope that you've uh, learned a few things about how to kind of set this up the other thing i should mention is if you are creating other in-ear mixes for other people just watch out about these disabled sends because if i create another return it is going to create an enabled send on all my tracks and that's going to cause latency as well. So if you do create another in-ears mix for someone else, like let's say you have a guitar player or whatever and he wants to hear click, but you don't want to hear click, you can totally do that, but just watch out for the enabled sends because that may create latency on your vocal. And another thing that you could totally do if you don't want to deal with monitoring in Ableton is you could set up your vocal in console and just monitor here, like I'm doing for this video, but you would need auto-tune, uh, the UAD version of auto-tune that runs on your Apollo. So that's pretty much what I got. Let me know if this video is helpful. I'll catch you guys in the next uh, episode. And check out my website. I have a bunch of free downloads up there too, but this, well, this one in particular is five bucks because I put some work into it. But let me know what you guys think, if it's helpful, if you want me to cover anything in future videos. I'm here to help. So I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. Mm -hmm.